are sliding downhill to the playoffs. Time to preview the stretch run. I talked to several coaches to get their input as well. The starting Class AA, where 16 teams make the playoffs and several coaches in the class think it's still a wide open chase. I think we, we know that it's not just a given for us and that there's a lot of quality teams that can go take matches from us night in and night out and, and that I think I think we're realizing that like where, where we're at right now is we, we got to bring it to another level and that the whole talent part of it can bring it so far but we do need to do a lot better at playing as a team. There's going to be some upsets. I don't think it's going to be one versus two in double A. You know, um, it might be a, a three and a five or a two and a four, you know. Um, so uh, not a bad thing. It just means that we're super competitive this year. Everybody's just going to battle it out to the end. Certain teams are going to win certain nights and others are going to knock them off on nights. If you don't show up to play, it's anybody's ball game. We're really kind of excited about a state tournament this year because you kind of look at the Harrisburgs and the four Sioux Falls schools and um, you know, hopefully somebody's throwing our name in there and maybe here and you've got six or seven schools. I think the final four is going to be a little bit unpredictable because it's hard to know who's going to be who and and that just is a that's a good year you know guys like you should just lick your chops over years like this because we could have more five set matches at the state tournament this year than we've seen in a long time here's a look at the standings as we get into october washington with just one loss that came to roosevelt early in the season the warriors have since avenged that but face a rigorous upcoming month we're going to hit the tough part of our season we've already had a lot of tough matches but now we're going to kind of go through a grind you know you look at um starting next week granted it's because of a schedule change because our gym floor wasn't done mm -hmm. um, but we got mitchell on monday then we host a, a big matchup again on tuesday against lincoln then we'll we'll pack up we'll go to fargo for two days and we're going to play you know some of the best teams in north dakota then we're going to come around the next week and we got Brookings on Tuesday. We go to Watertown on Thursday. Then we're going to Sioux City and playing the best teams in Iowa on Saturday. Come back around Brandon Valley on Tuesday. Then we have a big game against O'Gorman on Friday. And then we come back and we hit Jefferson on the Tuesday. So we don't have, we don't have weeks like we've had um, this first month and a half where we have one game or uh, we have a lot of time in between. It's going to be, we got to play a match and we got to come back the next day and kind of fix a few things and rest up a little bit and prepare for the next game the following day. So, you know, that's going to kind of show some of our perseverance and, and our grit and if we're going to be able to dig in and, and push through October. Macy Malchow leads AA in assists per set with her choice of some of the top attackers in the class with Jocelyn Richardson, Kate Legal, and Carly Beckstrand. Taryn Kirsch leads the team in digs with five and a half per set. And Grace Nesdahl leads the way in blocks and has been efficient attacking as well. O'Gorman sits at the number two spot in the standings and the rankings. They recently went through a stretch where they dropped their first three games of the season in a three day span. It's exciting because we're kind of getting into the heat of our schedule. Um, it's been busy, but we're, we're getting to play some of these better teams and, and we get to see kind of where we're at with it. O'Gorman responded last week with a road win against Pierre and then a five set win against Sioux Falls Christian. Always a tough match. Although the Knights have slipped slightly, they still boast a powerful lineup. Starting with Bergen Riley and Brogan Beck. Riley is hitting a tidy 346, and Beck a ridiculous 517. Gabby Jones has been excellent digging, and Brooke Harvison has over nine assists per set. But unlike last year, the AA field is much more open with several contenders in the next tier. Harrisburg has played near flawless ball almost all season with Gabby Zachariasen, Morrison Samuel, and Kalen Snoozy. They're literally killing it. Last week, the Tigers lost back-to-back -back matches against Washington in five and Lincoln in three, but they've bounced back with solid performances against Roosevelt and Jefferson. Lincoln's been on fire recently. They've won six straight matches, including wins over ranked opponents Harrisburg and Huron. 
When I just think about our team this year, the biggest consistency that we've had is really just our energy. Like if something's not flowing, maybe we're having an off day with passing or you know our hitters aren't really always getting it done. I feel like one thing that's been really consistent is that they've stayed very positive and they've stayed very energetic. Um, and that's really been just like a good high caliber thing that we've focused on is just bringing the energy on our side and controlling what we can control. So um, yeah, I've been, I mean, I've been super proud with the, some of these last few games and the outcomes of them, but we obviously have a lot of work to do and things to improve upon, but. Jazz Kuti, Linnea Nesheim, and Sophie Siegel have shared the attacking duties with Claire Brown leading in digs and Sam Zeke putting up some really consistent passing to the tune of seven and a half assists per set. Huron seems to be the team with the most upside in the ESD. Really the summary of the season is we've got, we've got quite a few senior starters who have a lot of varsity matches under their belt, right? So to include two of them that have a uh, state championship match under their belt from two seasons ago, right? So uh, we're leaning heavily on that group of uh, athletes in our in our program right now, and that's you know that leadership and that experience has really uh, drawn us to you know our current success of you know our record's good, but I would you know you start you start looking at matches even in the loss column, the, the tight match against Dakota Valley at the Pentagon, the, um, the five set 15 to 13 loss against Washington at home. Um, you know, there's a lot we can take away from those, and and I think you know our upperclassmen are are uh, motivated to continue to uh, work towards November, where maybe we can get a different outcome in those kinds of matches. Jefferson always finds a way to make it competitive. They rarely sweep or get swept. They started the year out with three five setters and continue to grind out every game. Maddie Paulson has started to increase her impact in the middle with some big blocks and increased kill totals. Pierre, they've lost three of their last four but continue to be a threat. Avery Kaiser has been leading the way. And Roosevelt is the only team that can say they've beaten Washington and O'Gorman. Zoe Huseman came to play in those two signature wins. She totaled 22 kills against Washington early in the year and then led the team with 18 against O'Gorman. She's been among the most efficient players in the class, and she also leads the team in digs. Stevens, Watertown, Aberdeen Central are all playing good ball this year as well in a wide open AA class.